Look at this great big square. And this is the center of nine squares, which is the original plan of New Haven. And that's clearly based on the description by Ezekiel uh, in his prophecies of the ideal city that Jehovah shows to Ezekiel as a refuge from the people who had fled from destroyed Jerusalem. So it's the new Jerusalem, that's why the new, it's the new haven, the new harbor for, for exiles, which is what it was. And it's based on the nine square, central squares open, as described by Ezekiel. And the tabernacle was in the middle, the meeting house was right there, and uh, the other squares are around it. And it faced east is also described by, by Ezekiel. That's the way that Jehovah comes into the temple from the east. So then later when that's torn down and the, and the squares are cut in half, you see by, by uh, Temple Street, see it running along there? Then they built three churches also facing east, like Greek temples or like the original meeting house. And you can imagine, see Yale wouldn't have this composition if it weren't for this great square originally. And the first Yale college house right up there in the corner, it's on the height, you see the screen down. We dominated the square. It was the biggest building in town, three times as big as the meeting house. And as I said, the old brick row was back from here. So here was the Yale fence. It was, it was open to the townspeople and to the Yaleys. And the building, the Yale fence, started way back there. And the Hill House planted the trees, which then come out and planted all over New Haven, the great elms. And from the planting of those elms, here come the elms in New Haven. And really all the, all the best things about New Haven derive from that original plan. And if we hadn't had that original plan, redevelopment would have utterly destroyed us here. Because much, as, much harm as they did to the city, once they started getting it, the other side of the green, that's when all the townsfolk awoke and prevented it, stopped it. And we couldn't have done that unless we had the place already. We're lucky. I mean, a good plan is what you have to have to survive. See, we had the big developer here. We had Dick Lee, who was the mayor, and acted on all the best advice you could get, and all that advice was crap. A lot of Yale sociologists and planners, horrible, horrible. But we stopped it. I mean, and I was part of it. We were led by a wonderful housewife, a great woman named Peggy Flint. And she was great, and she, she tried to put the whole plan, this great nine square plan, on the historic register, which had just been established, as you know. So. Is this when they were trying to tear down the uh, city hall? Trying to tear down city hall, trying to tear down most of all the post office. You don't tear down it completely. And the great thing is the lessons we learned here in the 60s are the lessons that have produced our best urbanism since that time. The new urbanism, so-called, has grown directly out of that. And preservation's grown out of that. Preservation learned how to fight those people. You learned everything they said was a lie. <laughs> it was, that's the very first important thing to remember. They always say it's too late to save it. It's gone too far, you can't save it. That's a lie, it's always a lie. They say uh, the, the, uh, the D, TUI, the, 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 the DOT. DOT. The Department of Transportation says you have to bring so that's always a lie. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's really kind of wonderful. And we were always like Jane Jacobs writing at the beginning of the you know, 60s. Our Peggy Flint, we were led by housewives. It was great. Not by architects who thought they knew it was all about. But by these women who were, you know, really active and intelligent and they said it doesn't make any sense. You learn, see, everything has to relate to everything else. That's what counts. It's not the great individual building. It's the relation of everything to everything else and to the overall plan that controls it. The whole city can be a work of art. Why not? It's changing all the time. It's full of life, full of mess, complexity and contradiction. Well, we see, this is great, the cars. Well, this guy's right in the way. <laughs>